All right, we're back with Linda for part two. We're so excited for the second half of our interview. We'll just jump right in. So our first question for today, how has technology played a role in your success? Oh man, I don't think I would be where I am today in my career without technology. And there, there are so many ways. So for my side business launched by Linda, which is uh, for career coaching, I advertise through a bunch of platforms, um, including find a therapist on psychologytoday.com and uh, the, there's like the Gallup Strengths Coach directory. Um, there's my website, my Facebook page, my LinkedIn page. So a lot of these places where clients find me and I don't do active advertising right now. Um, so I'm just waiting for clients to find me. And then all my sessions are done virtually. So I, have, I don't really do any in-person sessions. Um, I rely on FaceTime, Skype, and Google Hangouts. Um, for my job, obviously it's now all virtual. It's all on Zoom, student appointments, class presentations, teaching classes. And I use LinkedIn all day, every day to not only do my job and teach students how to use LinkedIn and build their online brands, but also to network myself as I am uh, trying to meet professionals, understand different industries. That's also super useful for me as well as my job. And I love um, webinars. This is um, a kind of a new thing for me, but starting with last fall, I started doing webinars on personal branding and it has um, reached a wider audience than I could reach naturally on my own, physically in person. So I'm grateful for that. And just for fun on the personal side, I have a YouTube channel and where I post like dancing and singing stuff. And then I have three blogs that I do for fun. So technology is everywhere and um, really enriches my life and makes what I do more effective. You're really using it to um, tap into a wider audience to make the world a little bit of a smaller place for yourself. That's great. Yeah. yeah that, is, that is awesome. I know technology, everyone's using it. I mean, basically everything you do now is technology. So that's really great. I'm glad you're basically leveraging it the best you can for all your people and advertising and branding. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so on to the next question. Uh, Linda, what traits does it take to make it in the business world? I'm sure there's a flurry of opinions out there. I can simplify it to two things. I think it depends on a person's level of emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills and their business acumen in, in terms of um, sales and marketing and um, finance and accounting, like the number side, the quantitative side, that is crucial to making businesses successful. But businesses are conducted person to person um, through relationships. So successful business people know how to read other people, know how to communicate in ways that build trust and know how to speak about a product, tell a story, um, engage other people's interests. So I think it's really, you have to have both in order to be a successful business person. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What are some of your personal favorite free and low cost trainings? Hey, well, this is a really nerdy question because I love online classes. Um, I think it's a really efficient way to build my resume, to increase my skill set. So I personally really like Coursera.org and edx.org. These are platforms for MOOCs, massive open online courses, which have come on the scene um, just about a decade ago, and they were created by uh, the Ivy Leagues, starting with the Ivy Leagues. Um, people at Stanford and people at Harvard and MIT were the pioneers in this field of online open classes. They wanted to make, it, make their classes more accessible to people at a low cost, um, most of the time free, and widen access to higher levels of learning. And other um, other sites have popped up like Udemy or um, LinkedIn Learning, which has bought lynda.com and um, Skillshare, Khan Academy. I think those are like the bigger ones. Those, um, those are focusing on shorter videos, like 15, 20 minutes, sometimes an hour to learn quick skills. Whereas Coursera and EDX, which I prefer, uh, have full class curricula, like 
weeks long. You can earn a certificate over several months, um, like if you do five classes under the same topic. Um, so I really like those because they get deeper, they're more structured. Um, they have a lot more interactive like quizzes and discussion boards and feedback from your peers. Um, so I really like those. And you can, you can take a lot of classes on, on those for free, but if you want the credential, like a certificate at the end, then you pay just like $50 a month. It's very affordable. That's nice. So there's something for everyone if you want something, just if you want. Yeah, you can even get a master's degrees on Coursera and EDX, which is really cool because it's so yeah. flexible. So exciting. That's awesome. All right. So next question. So right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and we hear a lot of people saying that we don't need to be productive. We don't need to be in competition to be productive. What, what do you say to that right now, like during this whole thing, like the not being productive, we don't need to be productive, we don't need to be competition. Well, how do you respond? Yeah, I think I have two thoughts about that. One is that we should take advantage of this extra time, like the time that we're not using to commute to and from work or to go to sports games and, you know, the things that we do for fun normally. Now we have a lot more time at home. Um, we should use that to forward our professional development to learn more things, um, whether it be for fun, like learning how to bake a cake or learning how to code um, things that you can use in your profession. At the same time, I think it's um, really not helpful to compare to be competitive um, with other people in terms of productivity during this time because everybody's situation is so different like whether you have children or not how old are your children whether your spouse is working whether you have a spouse whether you have roommates uh, whether you're sick or employed or unemployed there's just too many factors to try to be like the best within you know your group of people so i think um it's best to just be competitive against yourself. Like how good can you get, um, how much better can you improve from the beginning of COVID to whenever this pandemic ends? <laughs> I could not agree with that more. I think that that's where we'll find our deepest satisfaction and our happiness. And that's what ultimately uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how we're doing compared to anyone else we're going to be with ourselves forever, but other people will come and go. And so that's a great focus, a great thing to remember. Yeah, that was beautifully said. Absolutely. We're going to be with ourselves forever, but we don't have to constantly compare ourselves against others. Yes. Okay. So our next question, I think is very near and dear to my heart. And I think it is to yours as well. And um, we wanted to ask you about your thoughts on women in the workplace. That is a broad topic that we could, you know, spend hours talking about. Um, I think women in the workplace have fewer and fewer barriers every year because of the feminist movement, because, you know, we've had the right to vote for 100 years now. <laughs> There's been a lot of um, progress in terms of, of women's rights and opportunities. I think the biggest barrier now is lack of affordable health or child care and um, the lack of a federally mandated paid parental leave policy. Um, every other developed country in the world has this. The US is one of three countries in the whole world that does not have guaranteed paid time off when you have a new child. Um, so that is really hard on a lot of families. Um, a lot of women either delayed having children, which maybe they don't get to have children if it's too late biologically, or they have to um, pay a lot for childcare, or they have to try to move near family that can take care of their young children until they are school age. Um, so that is really a tough thing. Um, one, one thing women can do is make sure that whoever they marry and have children with supports them in their career goals, um, but also to try to work for companies that have those paid parental leave policies. And there are some companies that are trying to take the lead in that. I know Tom's, the shoe company, uh, the CEO is very passionate about um, giving paid paternal leave, like giving fathers time off to bond with their, their kids as well as mothers. And I know Adobe right here in Utah gives six months um, maternity leave, which is the best there is so far I've heard in America. 
I know I've recently been watching um, the Netflix documentary on babies, and it talks about how when fathers are involved more heavily early in a child's life, that they continue to be heavily involved throughout the child's life. And I've read other studies that say that as well. So that is a great thing for both men and women to be thinking about. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for addressing that because I know that um, while there are more and more areas where um, women are welcomed in, that it still can be kind of a daunting task to think about um, just the discrepancies that there are between um, the way that they're perceived or the way that they're paid and just how to go about um, making things more equal and um, more equitable for everyone. Yeah, I know there's still a lot of stigma in some places, I'm not sure exactly where, but I've read about uh, stigma in companies where there is paid parental leave, but people don't feel like they can take it and still be promoted or given a raise because they feel like it um, holds them back and makes them seem not as ambitious or or career focused as their peers, which is totally unfair because because if it's there, people should use it and not be afraid to use it because stronger families um, create a stronger society in general. And also I read um, interesting tidbit that um, men have the same physiological bonding response to their new babies as women do. Whereas people have said in the past like, oh, moms have to get their special bonding time because it's part of nature. But uh, fathers also experience that same close bonding if they, if they physically hold their babies. I love that, that's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. So good to have you. And again, we'll have thank you. Hello, and so everybody can check out your website. Awesome. Good luck with your YouTube channel. I think this is a great new undertaking.